Today we are on a very interesting project in London. What we are doing here, we are installing a super efficient heating system based on an air source heat pump and underflow heating throughout. So in this video I will show you full installation of a ultra efficient system based on a nurse's heat pump. So the property itself, I think it's 60s or 70s built. It has already insulated cavity walls, but what they've done as well, they've put this paint that seals all the air gaps and they also have a air tightness membranes on the walls. So they sealing the whole property using different techniques to make sure there are absolute minimum air changes. You can see some of those membranes already uh, right here. They started installing them on the ceilings. Those pipes there on the ceiling as well, it's what's called an MVHR. So that's a mechanical ventilation heat recovery system. What it means is simply there's a heat exchanger. So warm air leaving the property goes through the heat exchanger and cool air coming into the property gets warmed up. So that limits the heat loss of the property even further. On this floor, we are installing under for heating throughout. This is the top floor. So Simon here is putting those uh, panels for the bathroom on tile adhesive so they'll get tiled over. In other areas that get timber floor finishes, we'll be using what's called a uh, XPS panel. So this is just an uh, insulated panel with aluminum foil on top that will be put on the floor on contact adhesive. So that's the manifold for downstairs, not piped yet. Primary pipe work, the insulated pipe work is a primary pipe work from the heat pump that goes all the way across here and across to the heat pump in the garden. And this 22 millimeters pipe work, excuse me, all those wires, is the pipe work going through here, across there, right there to the manifold upstairs. So the heat pump is already in place and Simon is wiring it as we've got primary pro insulation on the primary pipe work there. And I know you're looking at the unit, you're thinking this doesn't comply. This is properly next to windows. Those are non-openable windows below the level of the unit, only above some 200 mil above the unit, those windows open. So yes, it does comply. And Marie is doing an awful job of putting clips into the pipe work by hand simply because those clips don't fit my gun on the bench the pipe work is lifting the panels so we have to clip them in and we only have 20 mil insulation below which makes it really hard to clip as well and as you can see the pipe spacing varies 150 in the bathroom 200 by the uh, entrance 150 spacing in the main living area 200 in this room because it doesn't have external walls and 200 in two bedrooms because they are designed to slightly lower temperature of 18 degrees, not 21. And upstairs, everything is 150 centers. And I had to route some channels. And also what they asked me to do is to install pipe work on this raised platform right here by the window. So we'll be going, I had to cut out a bit of a hole in this insulation and it will be going through, through here with the pipe work. So under for heating, it will be pressure tested on both floors. Screening company then will come and we'll come back here in about, I would imagine a month once they've got flooring done, tiling done. So we will install cylinder in that cupboard and controls and commission the system. So we back to this site today. And the last time we were here was when Marie started working for me around five months ago. So some of those renovation sites, they do take a while. Let's have a look uh, what they've done. I know the builders are gone already, so it's just finishing off or putting furniture in. Let's see inside. So it does look like it's mostly finished. Uh, it's just floors being protected and final decorations. And I can see electricians are probably doing a uh, second fix now. So they are not far from being completed and our unit is still out there in the garden and the plant room is going to be here under the stairs. So I'm gonna go to the shop to get bits and pieces and when I'm back I expect 
cylinder connected the whole plant from finish, right? The whole thing? No breaks to each dam. <laughs> no breaks. All right. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Taking into the account that MVHR setup, uh, we have here 130 square meters of floor area with an average heat loss of 26 watts per square meter. That takes us to 3.5 kilowatts total heat loss for this property. So 130 square meters, two bedrooms here and two bedrooms downstairs. It's a four bedroom uh, linked detached house, I would say, because it's linked by the roof terrace to another property. Uh, so the heat load, heating load, uh, heating requirements going to be really minimal. That's why we can afford larger spacings on underfloor heating. It's 150 centers and also high top value flooring, uh, timber floors. It kind of doesn't matter. We're still gonna run this setup at very low flow temperatures, at very high efficiencies. The design is well below 35 uh, C Celsius flow temperature for the flow of the heat pump, which takes us uh, to around uh, scopes of around 4.5, maybe even 5, uh, which means we've got efficiencies of, well, people hate it when I say efficiencies of 450 or 500 percent, but to put it differently, one kilowatt of electricity will transport four kilowatts of uh, heat into the property, resulting in five kilowatts of usable heat for every uh, one kilowatt hour of, of uh, electricity. So not much left, almost done. Almost finished with the plant room. Had to take, had to take the press away from Marie. Because it's getting late, we need to get it finished today. Now, don't look at this. That's not a ball uh, filter. We remove those, they get supplied with heat pumps. And because those are so useless, the 28 mil, it's just too small for heat pumps or any size. We use them as regular isolating valves to just remove the strainer. So that's our strainer, wide strainer. So it doesn't block as easily, uh, much lower pressure loss. Prefer those a lot. And it's such a tiny room. I thought we would struggle here, but actually the cylinder fits really nicely and there's still space for whatever they want to put in here. Let's turn the power on the unit on. So we've got this setup running now. There's still tons of air, so I have to purge the system. And the pipe work goes through the roof, so there'll be a lot of venting. You can, you can hear it, right? The most important thing for me is to check the actual flow rates. If I'm getting uh, my required flow rates, which for this property with three and a half kilowatt, it's only around six, 700 liters per, per hour. But it's the unit, I want it to be able to run uh, at much higher flow rates, at uh, 1200 liters, just to know that the pump doesn't have to work on that unit like crazy, which it shouldn't if my calculations check out. I can already see on the flow setters that I'll be fine with my flow rates. I'm getting three liters per, per loop, so I'll have to be throttling it down or throttling the pump on the unit down. I think it's an auto right now. So right now I'm getting 865 liters per hour. That is probably about 250 liters more than we need, but let's see what the pump is set to. It's definitely not 100%, it's auto. Let's see what it does on 100% so I know what the system can provide in terms of a flow rate. Yeah, so it is on auto. We're gonna swap it to, just for testing, 200%. You can hear it spinning up like crazy. And now go to live monitor. As you can see, uh, almost 1300 liters. So my system is completely fine. That pump will run at pretty low power to provide around six, 700 liters per hour to satisfy heat loss of this property at DT5. So I'm gonna go back to the menu, set it back to auto. I don't want to run it that fast. There's, there's just no need. The unit's been running all night and what a perfect day to test a heat pump because it's one of those very unusual days in London when you've got frost everywhere and it's minus one in the morning and the unit is, is running hard. You can see even frost here and it's might just about to go to defrost as well because it's pretty much frosted up on the back. If 
before we insulate the pipe work internally, let me talk you through how it's piped. So if you've got one installed or if you're installing one yourself, you know how to do it. So obviously we've got two pipes coming to it on the back. Flow and return and they go inside and they go up inside through the loft to the plant room. Around 15 meters run of flow and return. So we've got a total of 30 meters of 28 mil copper going from this 5 kilowatt unit to the understairs cupboard where the cylinder is. This is the plant room. So the heat pump is outside that window. The pipe work goes above here all the way across to the plant room here. And that's my main pipe work here. So flow comes down here and goes all the way to the diverter valve. This diverter valve is normally open for heating and normally close to the cylinder. And it only uh, can be open to one or the other. It's not a mid position valve. Then it goes here and it goes, this pipe is flow going to the manifold upstairs and that's return. And this pump here is flow to this manifold for the ground floor and that's a return. That's a return from uh, the manifolds right here, from this one, and it goes right here to upstairs as well, coming from upstairs. So that's a return from the manifold upstairs, and it goes down here, meets with this return from this manifold, and that's a return from the cylinder, and that return goes back to, that's a feeling loop here, Expansion vessel on the return, going back, going back, isolating valve, no strainer here, those are useless, too small, don't use them, they block too easily. And a Y strainer going back to the heat pump that needs to be positioned down, so any uh, dirt in the system will just fall off here and you can clean it. That's why you've got one in isolation valve here, another one there. So Marie installed those, uh, she should have installed it slightly lower because now we have to drain all this water in this pipe work if we clean that filter. Not a big deal, but ideally it would have been somewhere here. And then we have obviously expansion vessel, filling up with the pressure gauge and flow to the cylinder. One outer air vent on the coil to the cylinder right here on the flow. There's no need on for, for one on the return. And that's, that's the pipe work. So what you don't see here, you don't see a volumizer and you don't see a buffer. Uh, the reason being is the pump in the unit outside is fully able to provide me the flow that I need. And how do you know what flow you need? Uh, you use uh, equations, you use mass flow triangle, and if you're in heating, everyone should know it by heart. So the flow required is power, or your heat loss, divided by uh, dt, so the difference between flow and return on heat pumps in, in, in Celsius. So on heat pumps we designed to 5 degrees, on condensing boilers for example it's 20 degrees, dt5, dt20, multiplied by specific heat capacity of water which is 4.2 kilojoules. So in this case if we were to say we've got a 3.5 kilowatt heat loss at this property which is about right but that's taking into account MVHR as well. So let's say without MVHR running now, we would be probably around four. So let's say four. So if we've got four kilowatt heat loss, so our power, we have to divide it by DT5, because that's how we run the system. So flow, we're running at 35 degrees, now return at 30, and multiply by specific heat capacity of water. So we're gonna do the bottom of the equation first. So 4.2 kilojoules multiplied by five gives us 21. And we have to divide our heat loss power 4 divided by 21 and that gives us 0 0.19 liters a second so that's the flow this system needs those controls they, they show flow uh, in liters per, per hour so we can read what flow we are getting so we have to multiply it by, by seconds in an hour 3600 and we're getting 685 liters per hour that's what this system needs to provide 4 kilowatts of power to the property at uh, DT5. A lot of people are uh, commenting below videos when we talk about not installing buffers that you need them for defrost. 
That is correct. You need volume for defrost. You need minimum amounts of volume per kilowatt. However, if you calculate the volume of this system, you realize we've got plenty of volume, more than we need. Long primary pipe or gun to the units, plenty of volume in this system, provided you run it open, you don't zone it. If we were zoning it down, as you can see on the manifold, there's no actuators anywhere. We don't run any additional controls. So we run the system, what is called open loop. Uh, it's always fully open. And then, again, this is something that confuses people because you see comments, how do you control temperature in the rooms if you don't have any controls? Uh, the answer is you control it by correctly designing the system. When you design the system, we design this whole system ourselves. Uh, you calculate the heat loss of every single room and then you calculate the flow rate required for every room to provide the exact amount of energy needed for that room. And then we keep bedrooms at 18 degrees, uh, 17, 18 degrees or, or 19. And then living areas such as living rooms uh, at 20, 21, 22, you know, whatever your choice is. But there will be different outputs in bedrooms and living areas.